Hi guys, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 3 of topic 12, Experimental Techniques and Chemical Analysis. Let's learn about paper chromatography. Paper chromatography is a simple method to separate and identify soluble colored substances like dyes or inks using a suitable solvent. The materials needed are chromatography paper, mixture to be tested, example ink, suitable solvent, Example water or ethanol, a container, example a beaker to hold the solvent, and pencil and a ruler. So the steps are take a strip of chromatography paper, draw a straight line lightly in pencil about 1 to 2 centimeters from the bottom edge. This is the baseline. Place small dots of the mixture, that is the sample, and the reference substances on the baseline. For the moment, don't think about these three known substances. We will get to that when we are interpreting chromatograms. For now, just focus on the mixture to be tested. Pour a small amount of the solvent into the container. The solvent level should be below the pencil line to avoid dissolving the mixture directly. Hang or place the chromatography paper in the solvent so that the bottom edge below the baseline touches the solvent. Ensure the paper does not stick to the container's walls. The solvent will move up the paper by capillary action, carrying the colored substances with it. Different substances travel at different rates based on their solubility in the solvent and their attraction to the paper. When the solvent has nearly reached the top of the paper, remove it from the container. Mark the solvent front that is the highest point the solvent reached with a pencil. Allow the paper to dry. So what happens is the mixture separates into spots, showing its components along the paper. The position of each spot depends on how soluble the substance is in the solvent. Now that we've completed the paper chromatography, Let's interpret the simple chromatogram, which is the paper showing the results. Pure and impure substances. A pure substance will produce a single spot on the chromatogram, indicating only one component is present. Impure substances will show multiple spots as they contain more than one component that travels different distances on the chromatogram. So in the case of this example, the sample grey ink separates into red, blue and yellow spots, which is more than one spot, showing it is an impure substance. On the other hand, the red, blue and yellow are pure substances as each produces a single spot. Unknown substances by comparison with known substances. Now in our example, remember in the beginning, these three spots were labelled as known substances. Each of these spots represent a different component or a different part of the substance that we have tested. The distance travelled by each spot depends on the substance's properties. So we compare the positions of the spots on the chromatogram of the unknown substance with the spots of known substances. 
Each spot represents a different component and the distance travelled by each spot depends on the substance's properties. If the unknown substance shows a spot that matches the position of a known substance, it can be identified as the same substance. So spots that align horizontally indicate matching components. Remember in exams, chromatograms are often black and white. It won't show colored dots like this. So align the dots horizontally to identify matching substances. Now, we just learned how paper chromatography is used to separate mixtures of soluble colored substances. How do we separate mixtures of soluble colorless substances then? For soluble colored substances, we are able to see the dots move up the paper. But if the substances in the mixture are colorless, they will not be visible on the paper. In this case, we use something called a locating agent. A locating agent is sprayed onto the chromatogram after the solvent has moved up the paper. The locating agent reacts with the substances forming colored spots, making them visible. Now let's learn about RF values. RF values are numbers used in chromatography to show how far a substance travels compared to the solvent. Each substance has a unique RF value under the same conditions allowing us to match it to known values and identify the substance. We can't just measure how far the substance travels because that depends on how far the solvent moves which can change in different experiments. Comparing the substance's distance to the solvent's distance makes it fair and helps identify the substance more accurately. The equation to find this value is Rf is equal to distance travelled by the substance divided by distance travelled by the solvent. So how do we use the Rf formula? We first measure the distance travelled by the substance. This is the distance from the baseline, that is the origin, to the centre of the substance's pot on the chromatogram. Next, we measure the distance travelled by the solvent. This is the distance from the baseline to the solvent front, the furthest point the solvent reaches. And next, we calculate the RF value. Divide the distance travelled by the substance by the distance travelled by the solvent. The RF value is always between 0 and 1. So for example, if the substance travels 3 cm and the solvent travels 5 cm, RF is equal to 3 divided by 5 which is 0 0.6. That concludes part 3 of topic 12, Experimental Techniques and Chemical Analysis. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts in the comment section. Be sure to check out our other videos from our playlists. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye bye.